Woohoo! Welcome back. Today we're going to be working again with systems of equations and this time we're going to be solving them using elimination by addition or simply elimination. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to start with the theory behind the technique. Feel free to fast forward this. You aren't required to know how to do the theory. It's just something that I always wondered about when I was in school. So here's a, a basic rundown of what's going on behind the scenes. So behind the scenes, I'm going to start with two equations, A equals B and C equals D. And here I'm representing these with colors in case that's easier. A is red, B is yellow, C is blue, D is purple. So let's start with A equals B. So red equals yellow. That's it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say C can be added to both sides. So A plus C has got to be equal to B plus C because I'm adding the C to both sides of the equation. The other way to look at it here is I'm adding a blue dot on both sides. So if red and yellow are equal, red plus blue has got to be equal to yellow plus blue. So far, so good. Well, then I also happen to know that blue and purple are equal. So I can use substitution, ah, see what we were doing right before, to rewrite the second half. And I'm going to say, since C and D are equal, I can replace C with D. And since blue and purple are equal, I could replace one of the blues with a purple. And now I've got an equation that has either all the colors or all the letters in it. And it kind of looks like, although it's not what I actually did, but it kind of looks like what I did was I set up the two equations like this and I added. So the A plus the C gave me this A plus C and the B plus the D gave me this B plus D. So it looks like I just lined up the equal signs and added straight down. Same thing here. If I line up the equal signs, red plus blue equals yellow plus purple. And that's what it looks like. So in other words, up here, this is what's actually happening. And this is what it looks like. So we're going to talk about adding equations, but we're not technically adding equations. We're actually going through this whole process. It's just, ugh, this is a lot to do every time. So we're going to use the shortcut. Okay. So woohoo. Everyone can come back now. The theory is done. Congratulations. You survived. So let's go into dun, 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 our first example. So we're going to solve and check. And once again, I'm going to, rather than tell you what we're going to do, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So I'm going to take the 5x minus 3y equals 8 and the negative 5x plus y equals 4 and draw a line underneath them. I'm also going to make sure that the equals are lined up. So I've got an equals column. Now, this is two equations, and that they're in a system together, and I'm going to add. So I'm going to start on the right because it's easy. 8 plus 4 is, you got it, 12. Now, over on the left, 5x minus 5x means there are zero x's left. Now, you do not have to write in the zero. I'm just writing it there so we will remember that. And minus 3y plus y is a negative 2y. So what I get is negative 2y equals 12. Or y equals negative 6. And um, yes, this problem was set up to go really fast. But this is a much more immediate way to get to a solution than substitution in many, many cases. Especially if you do not start off with an equation where 
you've got x equals or y equals. You, you haven't solved for one of the variables first. So we're not done yet though. Now we're going to find x. And now here, the problem is, is to find x, we're gonna have to do a little bit more work because we don't have, we haven't solved for x or for y. You can choose either one. I'm gonna choose the top equation, the one we would normally call a, and I'm gonna plug in y. So I've got 5x plus 18 equals 8. Subtract 18 from both sides. 5x equals negative 10. Divide both sides by 5. x equals negative 2. Woohoo! So here we've got our answer. x equals negative 2. y equals negative 6 or negative two, negative six, depending on whether they want it written out individually like this or as an ordered pair. Okay, so now let's go ahead and check. I'm gonna go ahead and check. So um, five X minus three Y equals eight. Oops. And then I also need to check negative 5x plus y equals 4. So 5 times negative 2 minus 3 times negative 6. Is that going to give us 8? So this is negative 10 plus 18. That's 8. Woohoo! And this is negative 5 times negative 2 plus negative 6. Does that equal 4? See, I've got positive 10. Minus six, yep, that equals four. Woohoo! So we have checked, everything is great. We got our answer. And so that's elimination. So now here's a special bonus for elimination. If you use, when you're finding X or Y, when you're finding the second one you have to plug in, when you're finding X, if you use one of the original equations as I did there, to find x, you're going to notice that here you did exactly the same work. You do not need to be, you do not need to duplicate it. If you used one of the original equations to find one of the variables, then you don't need to check this one. You can just check this one. Now, is it safer to check them both? It's always going to be safer. So I would always encourage you to do as much checking as you can, but officially, Whichever one you use to find the x value or the y value, you don't have to check here. Woohoo! Okay, let's try another one. Yay, let's try another one. We love math. Okay. So, oh, there's no problem. Dun, dun, dun. Now, this one's not as nice. And the reason this one's not as nice is that um, we nothing matches up because if I just write 5x minus 9y equals 7 and 7y minus 3x equals negative 5, I line up my equal signs, I add, I get 2 over here. Uh, oh no. Oh no. How do I add these? So, okay, so now we say okay. We should probably, when we go about elimination, we should probably make sure the X's and Y's are all matched up. So if I've got 5X minus 9Y equals 7, then I'm going to rewrite this one as negative 3X plus 7Y equals negative 5. Does that make sense? Did you see me switcheroo those two? And that way I've got an X and a Y and everything is lined up. So then if we try this, 5x minus 9y, negative 3x, I don't know what happened with that 3, that every now and again numbers come out really funny. Okay, so we're going to add them, I get the equals are all lined up, I get 2 over here, I get 2x minus 2y, and there was, sad face, no elimination. This is called elimination because you're supposed to get rid of an X or a Y. 
and clearly I didn't. So what do I do? Well, this one requires another step. So to do this one, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to line up the x's and the y's. So I've got 5x minus 9y equals 7 and negative 3x plus 7y equals negative 5. And now I'm going to do something really cool. I'm going to multiply on top by 3 and on the bottom by 5. What does that mean? It means that I'm going to take a 3 and multiply it all the way through here. So I get 15x minus 27y equals 21. Now, am I allowed to do this? Absolutely. This is an, an equation, much like if you're trying to clear fractions or decimals, I'm just multiplying by a number. I multiplied every single term, so I followed all the rules. Totally legal, even if there is bunny hair everywhere. I'm going to multiply by 5 down here, and you'll see very quickly why I chose 3 and 5. Notice that by choosing 3 and 5, I picked them so that my x's cancel out. And now when I add, the x's cancel out, and I get 8y equals a negative 4. And that was the elimination I was looking for. I divide, divide both sides by 8, and I get y equals negative 1 half. Does that make sense? Now, before we go any further, you hopefully are looking at this and saying, wait a minute, could we also eliminate the y's? Absolutely. So if you wanted to eliminate the y's, you would multiply by 7 on top and y on the bottom, right, to make 63 for both of them. So always you'll have a couple of different options. Pick whichever one you like best. And then let's let's go ahead and continue with the problem. So, um, and not my favorite thing in the world to have a fraction, but I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to come over here and find x. I'm going to go ahead again and use the first equation, 5x minus 9y equals 7. I know y is 1 half, so 5x minus 9 times negative 1 half equals 7. So I've got 5x plus 9 halves equals 7. Now, you got some options. Um, if you'd like, you can write this as a decimal. If you'd like, you can multiply everybody by 2. It's anything you would normally do to solve this problem. I'm going to go ahead and write it as a decimal. Let's give that a try. We haven't done that in a while. Okay. Now I'm going to subtract 4.5 from both sides. You may need to use a calculator. I always have to think extra hard when I'm subtracting decimals. This is actually going to give you 2.5. And then I've got 5x equals 2.5. So if I divide by 5, and here you may need to use a calculator again, 2.5 divided by 5 is 0 0.5. Right, because two and a half is half of five. So my answer is x equals 0 0.5, y equals negative 0 0.5, or 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5, depending. Notice what I did here, though. In giving my answer, even though my initial y value is a fraction, if I'm converting to writing as decimals, you should give everything as a decimal. Or if you're going to write it as a fraction, do everything as a fraction. Just be consistent. Okay, I'm going to need another piece of paper because now... Oh, by the way, was this happy um, happy Matt Damon or sad Matt Damon? As I try to get his puppet out. Happy Matt Damon, yay! Because we got a single answer, which means we can build the spaceship. He can get home to Earth. However, before we put him in the spaceship, it's probably a good idea to check our work. So I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to say for the check, 5x minus 9y equals 7, 7y minus 3x equals negative 5. Okay, so let's take a look. 
Notice that I already did this work up here. This one is not necessary. Okay, this is the one that matches the work we already did. We don't have to do it. Um, if you are watching this video for somebody else's class, they may actually say you have to do both, and then you have to do both. Um, so I'm going to say, I say that the convention I learned was you don't have to check this one, just check this one. Um, so let's see, 7 times negative 0 0.5 minus 3 times 0 0.5, is that equal to negative 5? So let's go ahead and check. Okay, 7 times negative 0 0.5, basically 7 times 5, just with a minus and a decimal point. So 7 times 5 is 35, 7 times 0 0.5 is 3.5. Negative 3 times 0.5, 3 times 5 is 15. There's a minus sign and a decimal point, so it's 1.5. Negative 3.5 minus 1.5 is, in fact, negative 5. Check it on a calculator. We did it! Happy Matt Damon! Yay! Okay, so in the next video, we're going to go over what happens when the problem goes wrong, when you get a really weird answer. So go, in, go out. Get a break, watch, uh, you know, play some video games, dance around, do some art, sing, um, lecture, whatever it is you like to do. Read a book, uh, go outside, look at something far away so that you can relax your eyes a little bit and, um, you know, get a yummy snack and then come back and meet me for one more video. Woohoo! And until then, know that you're awesome. You're amazing. Woohoo! And math on.